Emily, would you believe me if I told you that this movie that we just watched, Space Jam, from 1996, starring Michael Jordan, is a true story? See, like, you looked at me, like, once we had finished this, and you were like, yeah, isn't it crazy this is a true story? <laughs> and I thought you were just fucking with me, because it's like, oh, yeah, Michael Jordan went to space and played with the aliens or whatever. And then you're like, no, he actually quit the NBA in, like, what, 1993? Yep. And then... For, for like a year and a half, played minor league baseball, mm -hmm. and then came back. Yep. And this movie is them doing a dramatic retelling of the <laughs> events that occurred during that time. Is this technically a biopic? This is a biopic. How do you pay? Whatever. I say biopic, but I don't, I don't slander know. those who say biopic. But Anyways. This is a documentary. This is a documentary. Yeah, this isn't even a fictional. <laughs> it is a dramatized, dr dramatized, dramatized, cartoonification <laughs> of true events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it should be held to that standard and treated as such. Didn't you take like a sports writing class or something like that? Or like sports movie class? Yeah. Did so they play this? What? Well, no, but I did write a fake essay and I posted it on my Twitter because I was like trying to be funny. So what had happened was I went to this really stupid college that I fucking hated. Privatized education is a fucking scam. I'll say you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> uh, but I went to this school and I signed up for a class that I had to do for a gen ed requirement called Great Works of Journalism Throughout History. That was the name of the class and the course description was basically what you would expect. A history of journalism, like important pieces yeah. that were like, you know, groundbreaking for the time, mm -hmm. whatever. You know, I'm thinking like Spotlight, right? We're exposing the priests. Maybe something about 9-11. I don't know, man. Like, what, uh -huh. whatever. It, I was like, this seems fine because I have to take some sort of history class. Yeah. And so I get there and on the first day, this man who is roughly 143 years old gets up and says, I have tenure and I'm going to do whatever I want and no one can stop me. So this is the syllabus. And he hands it out and it is straight up a sports lit class. We read, uh, we read three books about basketball. We read a Michael Jordan biography, some book about like the Larry Bird, Magic Johnson feud. Um, I don't know, fucking something else. We read a book about tennis. It was straight up just like a sports like class. I'd kill myself. Yeah, and I couldn't like switch it or drop out or anything just because of like the way my schedule was and mm -hmm. the school wasn't that big, so there wasn't like a ton of other options. So mm -hmm. I just fucking toughed it out and like it was fine, but it was just like was not what I signed up for. And I also am like not the kind of person who would have ever chosen that on my own. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, what the fuck? But I do have to say, it's some of the stuff that I've remembered the most because now I can t like make small talk with almost any like middle-aged man because mm. I'm just like, oh, uh, fucking Scotty Pippen, huh? <laughs> the, the 90s were crazy. Uh -huh. I Like really surface level basketball yes. chat. I can muddle my mm -hmm. way through. But I do know just about as much about Michael Jordan as anybody who's mm -hmm. just seen that documentary, The Last Dance, which yeah. I haven't seen, but it's just like basically like a recounting of his life. So mm -hmm. I'm like a little bit familiar with the happenings of Michael mm -hmm. Jordan, but mostly because of this film. Yeah. But so you wrote, you wrote a... Oh, I wrote like a fake. I was really pissed off that mm -hmm. I... I was studying for my final and I basically was pissed off that I was having to study all this like 90s basketball fucking trivia. And so I like scribbled in a notebook like, let me tell you about the greatest film ever made, 1996's Space Jam. Why did they make Lola Bunny so sexy? What the fuck was up with that? <laughs> and then I posted a picture on my Twitter and I was just like turning in my sports lit final. Like, <laughs> and it was just me bitching about yeah. Space Jam. Well, that's what all of my notes were for this movie is why the fuck is Lola Bunny just that sexy. And is why it... haven't we said the name of the podcast yet? This is The Swamp. You're listening to The Swamp. It's our podcast. Uh, and it's an acronym. Stands for some whack-ass movie podcast. <laughs> and this month we're doing uh, I Can't Believe You Haven't Seen This Month. And so to, st to kick it off, Emily had me watch The Sound of Music. Uh -huh. And so I was like, I'm going to make you watch my Sound of Music. <laughs> 
because like that's not even like a movie that I particularly like like or love, but I've just seen it so many times. You know what I mean? And I just think it's an abomination that you've never seen. Like I've never live, seen this. I live in a universe where I'm under the impression that every human being has seen this movie. I know you walked into my house today and asked every one of us if we had seen Space Jam, and none of us had, which is insane to me. I just this is like a cultural yeah. staple, a cultural phenomenon that just I don't understand I how this like, never crossed your path. Here's the thing: is like I feel like the, there's it's two people. It's people that haven't seen it, and then the people that have are always just shocked that w- when they like encounter the people that haven't seen it. Because I've had this conversation with multiple people. Yeah. Are they all around our age? Because I feel yes. like this was a huge like. If you weren't a child. Or, like, a basketball person. Mm-hmm. Like, I think if you were, like, you know, in, in an adult who's, like, into basketball or, like, yeah. 90s basketball that you could maybe extract some joy out of this yeah. movie. But otherwise, like, if you weren't a child or a basketball person, what are you going to get out of this movie? Well, it's fucking absurd. My jaw, you saw it. My mouth was wide open for about 80% of this movie because I didn't know what was going to go on next. I didn't know where it was going and I didn't know where it was going to end. I had no idea what the plot was. I knew there was basketball involved, and I knew there was Looney Tunes involved. Uh But I had no idea that there's an intergalactic... Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. (laughs) There's an intergalactic Danny DeVito who runs an amusement park and said, I need a new angle for my amusement park. Let's get the Looney Tunes, because the people love the Looney Tunes. And it's it's 1996. Simply that is not true anymore. (laughs) But that's his big scheme, is he's going to get the Looney Tunes. So he sends his little henchmen down, his little alien henchmen mm-hmm. that look like bugs, yep. down to go and get the Looney Tunes. And they have guns, so obviously the Looney Tunes <laughs> are powerless. Um, and then Bugs Bunny's like, let me make a deal with you. We will be your slaves if you beat us in a basketball game. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is already bizarre enough. Mind you, this is interspliced (laughs) with Michael Jordan's, like, retirement. And, like, he's (laughs) he's started playing baseball. Yeah. His Um, home life, his family, his kids. Yeah, these parallels are going on. And I'm like, where are they going to intersect? And then finally, what ends up happening is these little bug guys are like, okay, we can't play basketball. Let's suck the talent out of, like, five different NBA players Mm -hmm. and get hulked out. And then they become this massive, juiced-up basketball aliens. <laughs> and then... The Monstars. The Monstars. If you will. Sorry. <laughs> the Looney Tunes, who obviously do not play basketball, go and they're like, oh shit, we need to scheme too. And so they kidnap Michael Jordan... While he's playing while golf. While he's playing golf. With Bill Murray. <laughs> to help them win this game and be their coach and be their star. Yeah. And that's basically the entire movie. And they play a game... With the Monstars, yep. and uh, pff, they, they he saves the day. Yep. And he's and ready it. to risk it all. Yeah. Because they're playing this game and they're losing. And then he says to Danny DeVito, I want to switch up the deal. If we lose, you don't take the Looney Tunes. You're going to take me instead. And, and if we win, you have to give back the talent of the NBA players mm-hmm. and you have to let us all go. Michael Jordan was literally about to risk his fucking life with his he wife, wife and, and kids. kids. He's about to risk it all for the Looney Tunes. What? It, this movie's insane because... They it's He was like, rocking with it too. He got kidnapped by the Looney Tunes and like didn't bat an yeah, eye. Did not bat an eye. Like they yank him into a parallel dimension and he's just kinda like, huh? What? And then he's totally fucking with it. You he's he's <laughs> in there, he's like, you know what? This goes kinda hard. I will play on your basketball team. The entire screenplay is a, like a means to an end, basically, where they're like, okay, we have to figure out how Michael Jordan ends up playing basketball with the Looney Tunes. Mm -hmm. So then they're just like, it doesn't matter how we get there, but we just have to get there. So every action that leads up to that point makes no goddamn sense. And they're like, okay, now he's playing with with the Looney Tunes, Mm -hmm. so now we have to navigate, like, to the basketball game. And then again, the way that the Monstars come about makes no sense. So they were on so much cocaine when they wrote this movie. I swear. <laughs> like, heaps and heaps were in that hotel room. 
Like, oh my god. They were, like, flipping channels really fast between, like, an NBA game and the Looney Tunes, and they're like, wait, 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 we have something. There's, a, there's something going on here. Which, you asked me about the lore of this movie, and it actually, it does make a ton of sense if you put this into context that the director of this movie primarily did commercials mm -hmm. and music videos. And so he did um, a couple of Michael Jackson uh -huh. music videos and a lot of award-winning commercials, specifically um, like for Nike. Yeah. And basically the origins of this movie are that there was a series of Nike commercials where Michael Jordan would play against like a fictional character. So mm -hmm. there was one where he played against Spike Lee as Spike Lee's character, um, Mars Blackman from She's Gotta Have It. And then there was like another one where it's Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan team up to play against Marvin the Martian. And so it was like this whole like animated live action crossover. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, this is like a lot of fun. Yeah. Maybe there's something here. And I think it really is like the most perfect intersection of like branding and capitalism ever to be like, oh, yeah. let then let's just turn this into like a multi-million yeah. dollar movie. Well, because he's like the brand's guy. He is the brand guy, which they... This movie is so weirdly self-aware too, yeah. like like capitalism personified self-awareness, mm -hmm. which I, I think it almost kind of works here because it was the '90s. I think when movies or you know just any media tries to do that now, where they're like, "Oh, we are a brand talking to you, and we know that we're a brand, and we're doing the whole like breaking of the third wall between the the brand messaging and the consumer." Feels really like cheap. And frustrating to me because today it's almost like, okay, well, if you're that self-aware about it, then, like, you should realize the implications and repercussions of, like, why it's bad, you know what I mean? Of, like, why, like, severe mm -hmm. capitalism is, like, actually really detrimental and scary. And, like, you talking from that, like, cheeky perspective always kind of rubs me the wrong way. But I think since this was the 90s, that wasn't really, like, as severe of a like there was less of an understanding mm -hmm. around why all of that was so bad so them being like oh michael put on your nikes and eat your wheaties and drink your gatorade because we're about to go you know whatever because mm -hmm. he basically was like the brand ambassador guy he was really one of the first athletes to get that sort of like branding platform like he just said yes to everything he did commercials for mcdonald's mm -hmm. he did like basically he just put his face everywhere and that's part of why he's like one of the most celebrated or you know memorable mm -hmm. professional athletes ever in my opinion because not only did he have so much of a presence in his particular sport but like he was everywhere your sports lit class is really coming out right now this is actually this is way less of my sports lit class this is, this is, this is more of like your actual like yeah yeah what you actually went to school for yeah i went to school for advertising so this is all which is funny because i'm like mm -hmm. talking about how like capitalism is bad and scary but mm -hmm. i'm like yeah i uh, you know, went to school for, like, being a spokesperson yeah. for brands, which is, like, fucking hypocritical. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just specifically those commercials that he was in were really formative towards using athletes in advertisements. Because, um, you know, we see it all the time now, but I think it was kind of, he was the first to really pioneer yeah. or, like, be pioneered. Mm -hmm. um, Can we talk about the sexy bunny? Yeah, so... Because, like, we kind of touched on it, but, like... I believe this is the introduction of Lola Bunny. She was not a Looney Tune. She was Was not, she after this? She was not... Yeah, she... This was her debut. She was never... Why are, It's 1996. Why are they even debuting new Looney Tunes? Because they needed somebody to be sexy. Which one of them... They needed some sex appeal. Since when did they need <laughs> sex appeal? Why? Why? Because they're this like... Is, this is the thing that kicked off furries. Yeah, every furry who was born between the years of, like, 1990 and 2000, I think, was awoken by every, like, you know, if you're attracted to women and you're a furry. I think if you thought, if Lola Bunny was your sexual awakening, that's really something you could yeah. unpack in therapy. Yeah. Warner Brothers owes you money <laughs> for your, for your you fursuit. suit. <laughs> <laughs> If you were sexually attracted to Lola Bunny, you might be entitled <laughs> to financial compensation. By Warner Brothers. Yeah, it, there's no reason. You could cut her out of this movie entirely and absolutely nothing changes. It's they're, the same thing. They're like, we need a love it's interest just, for Bugs Bunny. This, Since when? This is your sound of music, except Lola Bunny is just the entire second act. <laughs> There's no reason for it. She, why is don't she need here? Nazis. Don't need Lola Bunny. Don't need Lola Bunny. But it, she, why is she so sexy? And the thing that's funny to it's me. It's scary. They have her hips swaying. Oh, they're not even trying to hide it. 
Yeah. That there, I, and I, I would say that there's maybe a roundabout way that you could argue that like she's a representation of how women in sports are treated and like over sexualized and will never have the same respect no, no, as their no. male counterparts and like cheerleaders maybe commentary there. I guess. But no, no, I don't think they were thinking that hard about well, it. They're also, like, we we need a, a fuckable Looney Tune. <laughs> I was gonna say you can't say that because there's that one scene where I forget what uh, what basketball player he is. Um, but he goes up and he's like lost all of his powers and he basically like walks up on like the the Sunday like basketball game for the lesbians. Yeah. <laughs> It's a gaggle of queer women. <laughs> and they're like, you're not Charles Barkley. You need to get out of here. <laughs> Scram, buddy. <laughs> but like, oh my God. It was just so funny because I was sitting there. I was like, I was like, oh, he's walking up on the girls game. I'm like, oh no, he's walking on the lesbians game. He's going to get his ass. Even if he did have his powers. Yeah. He's getting his ass handed to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess that that is true. Um, I don't think that Warner Brothers was trying to make any sweeping statements about the WNBA with the no. characterization no, of Lola no, 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 Bunny. No. <laughs> that's the only two. That's the only representation in the movie for women. Those two instances yeah. is the lesbian basketball game and Lola Bunny, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> uh, which makes no sense. Um, this movie does not pass the Bechdel test. <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. And the, the funny thing to me is that, so this movie got like a, a sequel or like remake, whatever you want to call it, yeah. in 2021 And they last de-sexified year. Lola yeah, Bunny. Yeah, they, they de-yossified <laughs> Lola Bunny, which is funny Who to voiced me. her? Was it Zendaya that voiced her or something like that? I couldn't tell you. Hold on. I think it is. But she, basically they put her in a, they made her less overtly sexual and everybody was like... Was mad. People were pissed. People were really upset, which I'm like, okay, just out yourself as a furry on Twitter, I guess. But also, I think them, like, making her less sexy is them openly recognizing that they made her too sexy this, <laughs> the, the first time around. They're like, oh, God, somebody was too horny in the animation studio back in 96. and they It's all the up. coke. They <laughs> fucked up and they made her too sexy. We need to make her less sexy. Which I, I feel like maybe if you just kept her the same... It would have caused less of a stir because then it like reignited the conversation of like, yeah, why was she so sexy? No. <laughs> that sexy bunny had, has done ir- irrecor- ir- ir- irreparable <laughs> damages. <Yeah. laughs> the world has never been the same after Lola Bunny strutted onto the scene. And yeah, she just makes n- she she doesn't need to be there. But I guess I digress. Maybe she did add something for some people. <laughs> I don't think that's a good thing. <laughs> Which, also, do you know that Tweety Bird's a boy? I love that. I didn't know that Twink until, King. Yeah, I didn't know that Tweety is supposed to be... I feel like a lot of people perceive Tweety to be female yeah. because of the voice. But yeah. I I believe I saw this as like a fun fact somewhere pretty yeah. recently. No, I didn't know that. Tweety, Tweety is canonically male, which I didn't know. Oh, so, yeah. So that's why they're like, oh, we need some girls on this team so that there's some representation. Mm-hmm. But I guess the grandma, she was on the team. Kind I rocked of. with her. Yeah. Yeah. No. Like, while everyone else was... not Sorry, not to get back to it, but while everyone was <laughs> fawning over sexy Lola Bunny, uh-huh. why was Michael Jordan fighting with an animated alien Danny DeVito? Kind of doing it so for hot. me. Michael Jordan is sexy. He's a hot man. Like, yeah. But all, yeah, that's like specifically the, the, when the, he's like, like sticking it to he's him. He's in there. He's like, hey, buddy, I'll sell my soul if we lose. <laughs> I'll abandon my wife and children <laughs> for these animated mm-hmm. people. I mm-hmm. met people, creatures, <laughs> tunes, these these loony tunes that I met less than 48 hours ago. <laughs> I'm willing to risk it all. I think he found his actual home. Yeah. Like, once he entered the Looney Tuneverse, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm actually so comfortable here, guys. This is where I belong. But basically, what had happened in real life was that he... Um, he didn't go to the Looney Tuneverse? He, well, he did. Uh-huh. Um, but Thank you. But he played basketball, obviously, and was, you know, regarded as being yeah. the, the greatest living basketball player. And then his dad was murdered. And the mur- I feel like I knew that. Yeah, the murder of his father kind of spurred him to retire 
And um, they kind of hint at it at the beginning of the movie. He yeah, has like, a line. I'm glad my dad got to see my last game. Yeah, but basically his dad's dream for him was always for him to be a baseball player, not a basketball player. Mm-hmm. So basically his dad's death is what like triggered him to be like, oh, maybe I should like play baseball in my dad's memory, basically, mm-hmm. or like, you know, to honor like what he wanted me to do mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, but then obviously he then, you know, wasn't. He played minor league, and he was, like, mm-hmm. mid at it, and then he went back to basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, like, sort of what had happened. But yeah. I'd like to think that he also took a little pit stop in the Looney Tuneiverse and just, like, really f- figured his shit out. I wish yeah. every time I had a mental breakdown, <laughs> I got kicked out by Looney Tunes. They, like, make me, you know, participate in yeah. some sort of life or death situation, and I really just come to my senses. Well, like, that's the thing. is like, starting this movie, I was sitting there, and I was like, the Looney Tunes mean nothing to me. At all. Like, I watched them like, as a kid, but not, like, watched them watch them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I know of them and, like, all the characters and all that shit. Mm-hmm. But was I sitting there and watching, like... Like Sunday morning cartoons? No. Yeah, I think... I was watching Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. I was not watching this, which is why it's so, like, weird. To... Not weird, but, like, why to me it's not crazy that I haven't seen Space Jam. Because, like, I had no attachment to the Looney Tunes. I feel like I... Think of them, like, less as, like, pieces of media from my own life, but just, like, p- like p- pieces of pop culture that are so relevant and persistent throughout time that you cannot avoid them. Like, well, yeah, because they keep making movies like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. But, like, even though I never, like, yeah, I, I would say similarly, I never, like, fully sat down and watched, mm-hmm. lo- like, episodes of the Looney Tunes, mm-hmm. but, like... If you asked me when I was, like, six, like, who are the Looney Tunes? Like, yeah, I fucking knew who they were. Like, mm-hmm. they're just, like, inescapably a part of, like, pop culture always, mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know. Maybe that's, like, a a generous estimate for, mm-hmm. like, how popular they actually are. But, like, my relationship with the Looney Tunes had nothing to do with my connection to this specific movie mm-hmm. as okay. a kid. I also, I had a younger brother who was really like a sports guy yeah and him and i as kids definitely struggled to like meet in the middle for stuff we liked Mm -hmm. because it was always like i liked kind of the more girlier like weird stuff and he was always into the sports stuff so the the few things that we settled on got played a lot Mm -hmm. and like the sports movies that i could tolerate like the sandlot the mighty ducks this one Mm -hmm. were like definitely on a lot more because it was like something we could both enjoy whereas mm-hmm. like 90 percent of other movies was like either a yes or a no mm-hmm. like for one of us which i don't know maybe just being in a two sibling situation where we like had to be forced to get along also like forced me to yeah watch a lot more of those yeah. like sport Makes movies sense. um yeah. can we talk about the soundtrack because this was dude crazy that's one thing i wasn't expecting this was shortlisted for when we did banger soundtrack months i had mm. put it on as like a suggestion for the list, because this truly stands out in my mind as, like, banger after hard. banger for no goddamn reason. I re- we, you know, picked a bunch of other, objectively, maybe more banger soundtracks to do for that month. But this, like, take away the soundtrack for this movie, and it becomes half as good. Mm-hmm. It, it is making it. And not even just, like, the titular Space Jam song, which I will say yeah. I think is my favorite. Well, yeah, that um, makes sense. Yeah, as it plays over the 10-minute opening credit scene. <laughs> That's where you can really see that this movie was directed by someone who makes commercials. Yeah. That it was just, like, basically, like, a highlight reel of Michael Jordan's basketball career for the first 10 minutes yeah. of this movie, like, with flashing credit uh-huh. sequences. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> Oh, my God. But, no, I was I was absolutely floored at how, how many good songs they had, like, one after the other. And basketball related songs. Yeah. Hyper specific Space Jam related mm-hmm. songs. Yeah. Well, it was an $80 million budget for the movie. Mm-hmm. So and so definitely like a handful of that money went to the fucking music. Yeah. And it ended up making like, I think it was 250 yeah. mil or I'll, something like it that. It certainly did its job. Oh. It did more Absolutely. than enough. I also have to think that some of it had to go to that crazy cast because I, I'm sure Michael Jordan was not cheap. Bill Murray? Like, why? Why was he there? No Danny reason. DeVito probably did this for free. Yeah. <laughs> he did not even need to be paid. 
You were saying it was giving like Phil from Hercules, which it's so, it was like he was really on his like little voice acting shit uh-huh. back then. Mm-hmm. And then all of those were real NBA players. Yeah, all the NBA players like playing themselves were all. Which I'm sure I they, like to think like a lot of these people just did this because they kind of wanted to. Yeah. Honestly, if somebody came to me and pitched like, "Oh yeah, we're like making like a Looney Tunified version of Michael Jordan's brief stint away from the NBA." Will you be in it as somebody who got their powers <laughs> stolen by an alien? Absolutely. I'd be like, yeah, sure. But they actually did a lot more acting than I think you would expect. Like there was the, a good amount. Oh, like the the basketball players, like in the therapy room. Yeah, and, like, I rocked with that montage. Yeah, but yeah, they, I would say they're in it like a, a fair amount because they have the basketball scenes and then all of the scenes of them like reconciling with not having their powers anymore mm-hmm. and then them getting them back at the mm-hmm. end. Like they have way more screen time, I think, mm-hmm. than you would think a non-actor mm-hmm. or like somebody who would maybe just like show up for like they're in it more than bill murray absolutely yeah which also larry bird is in this but they have him playing golf i don't know if he like wasn't playing basketball at the time definitely not he was old yeah yeah uh, yeah he's like the 80s i guess i don't know you, hopefully you didn't come here for basketball knowledge because that's not me that's yeah well i guess you do have it so. i'm d- well i'm basically drained like i'm every every bad thing i know about basketball is inadvertently, like, related to Space Jam Mm -hmm. because that's the only things I retained were, like, the only reason I retained anything from that class about the life of Michael Jordan is because I'm like, oh, he's the guy from Space Jam. (laughs) Michael Jordan is not the NBA player to me. Mm -hmm. He's the guy from Space Jam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I think watching this, I realized this is probably one of the, if not the most whack movie that we've done yet. It's Honestly, a fucking whack movie. It's in, it's shit fucked. It's <laughs> I loved it. Like I was like, we I, should like, be on crack well, right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Absolutely. But I was sitting there and like, I was. It, we were like, I thought we were like maybe thirty minutes into the movie or something like that. <laughs> it was like, over. and I was like, I was sitting there. I was like, wait, the basketball game is already here. Yeah. Like what? We just started. We were an hour in. It's an eighty. We had like we had like twenty minutes left in the movie. I was shocked. It is it. It's an eighty-eight minute yeah. film, which is particularly like, short, but it is a kids' movie. I feel like I can't even praise the pacing because it's not like it was intentional. It was just everything got thrown against a wall and then storyboarded, mm-hmm. and that's it. There was no thought behind it. <laughs> it they, the, the Looney Tunes spit shine a gymnasium, please. <laughs> Like, what? Yeah, I know. It does really fly by because the the first hour is basically exposition that makes no sense. And then the last half hour, or I guess like 25 minutes, is the basketball game. And that's it. That's the whole movie. So it, I, I do agree with you that it's up to the point where the mm-hmm. basketball game starts. You're like, wait, huh? Yeah. Like, what even has happened? There's a whole scene where like, what's his name? What's the duck? Daffy. Daffy? Daffy Duck. Yeah. Um... And Daffy Duck, like, go to get his shoes from his house. Yeah. And his kids see... Cut it. Yeah. His kids see that they're there, and they're like, oh, Papa's playing ball with the fucking Looney Tunes. <laughs> yeah, this like, is... Like, why? Like, I feel like we typically state that, like, most movies could be edited down to 90 minutes, and you couldn't... You could, like, not lose any major, like, plot or anything. You know, you can't... You could make most movies 90 minutes. This is an 88-minute movie that could have been done in... 20 to do. yeah 20 26 minutes yeah. space jam could have been it could have been an episode of a of a kids tv show you know mm-hmm. like a like a you know you get the 30 minute slot but your show is actually 22 minutes because you have to account for commercial yeah. breaks it could have been a 22 minute episode uh-huh. of a tv show well this entire like you said this entire movie is just one extended commercial it's yeah it's one huge commercial <laughs> for michael jordan as an entity yeah, yeah. It's for every single one of his ad placements. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh Which I'm so sure that this movie spurred, like, a crazy amount of merchandising sales. Absolutely. Not only for, like, Looney Tunes slash Michael Jordan related, like, merch outside of it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sure it, like, you know, reinvigorated. I mean, he already was so famous in the 90s, but, like, e- even more so now with this movie. But, like... Looney Tunes specific basketball jer- jerseys, like yep. like those. For I'm sure, sure like Monstar jerseys. Yeah. Like I'm sure that like really popped off. Yeah. We're back at it again with another chocolate or vanilla interim podcast segment with my lovely mother Jen. Here she is. How are you doing? I'm really good. How are you guys? I'm spectacular. Outstanding. 
And she's right. here, and she, we're going to play a game, chocolate or vanilla. She's going to say two things, and we're all just going to say which one we like better. Jen, is there a theme this week? There is a theme. Looney Tunes versus Disney. Ooh, okay. okay. Th- this is tough, because we were, we were just discussing how, like, the Looney Tunes are kind of, like, cultural icons, but not necessarily, like, particularly nostalgic to us as kids. Like, we didn't, like, grow up watching the Looney Tunes, you know what I mean? Right. I digress. Proceed. So, chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Vanilla. Chocolate. Bugs Bunny or Thumper from Bambi? Um, Thumper doesn't really give me much of an impression. I don't really recall. I remember the skunk from Bambi being kind of cute. Mm. What's her name? Flower or something? Flower. Yeah, I remember her being kind of cute, but I don't really remember much about Thumper. So I guess I'll give it to Bugs, because at least he, you know, is mm-hmm. memorable. Bugs is irritating to me, and I rocked with Thumper. I thought he was mad cute, so I'm going to go for Thumper. Why? You think Bugs Bunny is irritating? Yes, extremely. Yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. I'm still going to pick Bugs, but you're not yeah. wrong. <laughs> Thanks. Um, next one is Daffy Duck or Donald Duck. Uh, both both have, like, the same lisp, I feel. It's all the same. It's like they I have the same speech impediment. Yeah, and they're both, like, the irritating sidekick. So they really did, like, a bit of a one-to-one on that one. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But I guess I'll pick Daffy. Because he's a black duck, and, like, does that exist? I've never seen a black duck. I don't know. I think so. I've only Maybe. seen, like, brown ducks. Yeah. I'm going to go for Donald, though. He wears a little sailor outfit. Yeah. That's kind of camp. I'm, I'm going to go for Daffy. Um, next one. Roadrunner or Dash from The Incredibles? Ooh. I feel like Roadrunner is, like, used in a lot of, like, corporate, like, corporate imagery for, like, isn't he, like, the logo for, like, a motor oil company or something? Am I wrong for that? Am I, like, Mandela Maybe. affecting that? I don't, I don't know. I guess I'll pick Dash. Because The Incredibles is just an objectively better movie than... I fucking love The Incredibles. Yeah. So I'm, I'm also going to choose Dash. Yep, me too. Dash old par for the win. Yeah, it was our first episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Throwback. Throwback to our first episode. I don't know if I would recommend that you go back and listen to it. Because <laughs> I genuinely haven't since our two years since yeah. uh, recording it. So I can't tell you if the quality is, is any good. But it is what birthed this podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes if I'm listening... It'll kick back to the beginning, so I'll, I'll hear the beginning of the Incredibles episode. Hmm. It, was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jen. But, but good, too. But good. Uh, next one, Wile E. Coyote or Scar from Lion King? Scar. Yeah. Scar it has, like, a, that musical number, mm. Be Prepared. Yeah. Yes. I, I like that he's an asshole. Mm. Like, he's one of the, like, really good, like, Disney villains, villains I think. Villains, yeah. Um... I will say Scar. Uh, Tweety Bird or Owl from Winnie the Pooh? Owl is one of the less memorable Winnie the Pooh characters. Yeah. So I I definitely am going to have to go with Tweety on this one. Yeah, Tweety for sure. Yeah, I'll take Tweety. So cute. Uh, Next one, Lola Bunny or Tigger? Fuck Lola Bunny. We are an anti-Lola Bunny podcast, (laughs) um, so I'll pick Tigger. Yeah, easily Tigger, even though he is also irritating. Yeah. I feel like as a kid, I really liked Tigger's big movie. Do you remember that one? Mm-mm. Yeah, I would. I would say Tigger too. You guys don't like. You don't think uh, Lola Bunny gives like girl power energy? No. Girl, you think Lola Bunny's a girl boss, Jen? Yes. I mean, she gets it done, right? No. No. Incorrect. All right. Uh, next one. Uh, Granny or Grandma Tala from Moana? Oh, the grandma from Moana because she turns into a stingray and that's kind of badass. Dude, she's all vibes. Yeah, easily, easily, easily the grandma from Moana. I love the crazy grandma from Moana. I love her. Uh, next one is Tasmanian Devil or Genie from Aladdin. Gotta give it to Robin Williams. Genie from Aladdin. And that I'm not including the Will Smith, Will Smith. version in no. the live action. Get that shit out the my live face. action Disney remakes do not exist to me. Like that, I do not live in a world where those exist. I'm sorry. Not in my reality. (laughs) Not in my simulation, they don't. (laughs) Um, No, easily genie. Same, I love the genie. Uh, Next one, Marvin the Martian or Stitch? Oh, Stitch. Stitch is so good. I I kind of rock with Marvin the Martian. Yeah? Something about him. I don't know. It just scratches my brain right. I like that I can't see his face. Mm. Mysterious. Yeah. Intrigue. Yeah. Mm. I have a friend who has um, a... French bulldog. Is it a French bulldog? 
maybe or Stitch. something like that but it looks like stitch it's famous oh, Stitch. Okay. but straight up i'm like that's stitch like if you told me that that was an alien that you're hiding as a dog in your home i would believe you because mm. it's so absurd looking I, I will say stitch too i love stitch um i think it's marvin the martian me. is um a very common tattoo i think a lot of people have that as a tattoo. i was gonna say yeah that's a good what one. is the symbolism what does it mean he's cool i just think people think it looks cool yeah, exactly. <laughs> the meaning of this great. tattoo is that it's cool. Yeah. Uh, next one is Elmer Fudd or the Sultan from Aladdin. Ooh, the, uh, is he the one, who, the one who's selling Jasmine away to Basically. Jafar? I don't know anything <laughs> yes. about Elmer Fudd other than that he wants to kill animals, but at least he's not trying to sell his daughter. So Yeah. Yeah, I can rock with Elmer on that, I guess. But he also feels like a patron for like NRA lovers. I feel like a lot of gun people would really connect with Elmer Fudd. Uh, they have Elmer yeah. Fudd tattoos. Yeah. You're either an alt man with like a very <laughs> tiny little mustache and a Marvin the Martian tattoo, or you're a southern NRA, maybe not southern, Yeah, but you're an NRA lover with an Elmer Fudd tattoo. No, you like live in like western Massachusetts, but you have a confederate flag on your truck for some reason. Yeah. Like you're not from the south. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll uh I'll go with the Sultan. I don't think he's trying to sell her off. I think he's just like the the goofy dad. Next one, Speedy Gonzalez or Bernard and Bianca from The Rescuers. Neither of these. Men oh my god, you've me. never seen The Rescuers or The Rescuers Down Under? No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh my god, oh my god. Voice have you ever by... seen an American Tale with Fievel? Nope. So. There. Nope. Oh my god. Is that what um, we're watching next week? Maybe. Bernard and Bianca were voiced by uh, Bob Newhart and uh, Ava Gabor, maybe? They're the mice, right? Yeah. What was your other choice? So, Speedy Gonzalez? Oh, Who is uh, he? Is Speedy. he the mouse? He's like, Arribele, Arribe. <laughs> he likes really fast. Okay, sure. I'll go with him. <laughs> I'll go with him. I like his name. Oh my god. I'll go with Speedy. <laughs> Did you already pick Dar? Yeah, I said Rescuers Don't oh. Under. And then I say yeah, something from American Tale, even though that's a different movie. <laughs> uh, say, I'm going to go for the Rescuers. Um, this is my last one. Sylvester the Cat or Oliver from Oliver and Company? Oh my god, is that another one you haven't seen? Oliver and Company? Nothing I can remember. That's like, okay, so Phil Collins is to Tarzan as Billy Joel is to Oliver and Company. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a good time. I'm Shit. definitely going Oliver and Company. Okay. What was the other choice? Sylvester the Cat. Like, I, I don't know Oliver, but, like, I'll choose Oliver and Company just for the Billy Joel aspect of it. As you should. Yeah. Um, Huey Lewis and the News had a lot of songs on Oliver, too. I will go for Oliver. Erin loved Oliver when she was little, so we used to watch it yeah, all the these time. Yeah, these are, maybe these are just movies that I got, like, hand-me-down from my cousins who were, like, a good, like, eight, nine mm-hmm. years older than me. Yeah. It's like, I got the, the VCR hand-me-down, yeah, so it's, no, like, more, sense. like, early 90s stuff. Where it's sense. like you were the eldest, yeah. so that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Are you older or is Alyssa older? Alyssa's older, but, but by like, we're the same yeah, age. You're twins. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jen. I like this <laughs> one. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, have an awesome week, and I will definitely you. see you guys soon. All right. Love you. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. How often? So, like, here's the thing. is like I'm a little shocked that I never saw this as a kid because I went to, like, this seems like one that you see at, like, like, summer camp, you know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. I went to, like, our school's, like, sports summer camps. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times I watched, like, Miracle mm. and The Sandlot, but I never saw this one. How freak... So, I mean, you said, like, this was, like, where you and your brother, like... like met in the middle. Met in the middle. Yeah. How... Since then, how frequently do you... Would you say that you have watched this movie, or do you continue I, to watch this? I would say, past the age of 12, I've seen this movie... Six times. Okay. As as a either like a teenager or yeah. adult. It's a it's a really easy one to just throw on mm-hmm. in the background while you're like yeah. you know, at like par- at a party or like, you know, hanging out with people doing something mm-hmm. else, you know. Yeah. Um because it's super mindless but also so entertaining that you can like glance up and be like, Wait, what the fuck is happening? Mm-hmm. There's like a paper clip inside Michael Jordan's ear and you're yeah. like, Haha, that's itching my brain in an interesting way. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's not, I don't really, like, mm-hmm. choose to sit down and watch it very often, but I, I also just feel like it's, like, on a lot. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I think it's just you. Yeah, I, I guess I, so. I think it's just, like, you know, it's, like, your spidey senses start tingling, mm. and you're, like, Space Jam is on table. <laughs> I have to find it. 
There are a lot of things about this movie that do like kind of itch my brain. I think in that really specific way during the like mid to late 90s where they were kind of figuring out where to draw the line with like animation. So like obviously like really flat animation, like just straight up 2D was yeah. a thing. And they were like creeping towards being able to do 3D stuff. And it was like conceptually there, but mm -hmm. just like in practice and not looking great. Yeah. And you mentioned like, that you felt like you were getting visual whiplash by just, like, how frequently the animation style was, like, yeah. just so inconsistently changing. It like, was weird. Like, some things were 3D modeled, and some things were flat, mm -hmm. and then obviously then you have the element of, like, it also being live action. Mm -hmm. And they took a lot of inspiration from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which was really one of the first movies to do the, like, cartoon meets live action yeah. film sort of mashup thing. Mm -hmm. But here they, they do that and then they're also like, oh, but we're gonna like also 3D model some of it. So some of the like movements were like real camera movements trying to 3D model animation. Mm -hmm. But like they didn't have the technology to, to meet what their vision was. Uh -huh. And it just looks so like crunchy, not completely rendered or like textured mm -hmm. correctly. Like the specifically like the scene where um fucking Newman from Seinfeld gets flattened on the basketball. Yeah. Like that, I'm like, oh I like it's it itching my brain, but like I don't know if it's a good itching my yeah. brain. Like it just doesn't belong there. You know what I mean? It's the same way like when what is it? When they squished him into a, the size of a ball and they dribbled Michael Jordan around. Yeah. That was that. weird. It was when it was, like, they the when Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, like, crept into, like, his house. Mm -hmm. and, like, his kids saw them. Yeah. Like, it was just it was just a little off. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm sure and it was, like, were, like, fine. But, like, it's one of those things, like, if you weren't, like, paying attention, you'd be, like... What's, like, wrong here? Or what's different here? You know what I mean? It's like how sometimes movies get a little bit blurry, and I, like, worry that my vision is starting to go. But then I realize it's, <laughs> it's like... the cataracts. It's, it's a, yeah, it's like an artistic choice. But sometimes I'm like, is this, like, blurring out because, like, I need new glasses? Yeah. What's or, going on here? It was kind of in that same way that I was, like, making my eyeballs strain. In yeah. In a way that I was like, am I, like, having a stroke right now? Yeah. Or is this just, like... Was this just made in 1996? Uh-huh. Which is which? <laughs> Who's to say? Yeah. <laughs> so I looked up about the new one because I had no interest in seeing the I new. I was going to ask if you had. No, I haven't. I really had no interest. It was something that they were like talking about for like literally a decade, I feel. I feel like we were like in high school straight up when they were like, oh, they're going to do a, a Space Jam sequel. yeah. And I think it was like going to, I don't know if it was going to be Kobe. Like, don't quote me on that. But yeah. it was, it was going to be somebody other than LeBron James at first mm -hmm. and then like just, like, the project just, like, didn't, you know, the way that making movies yeah, typically that, yeah. goes. But I looked up, because I really, I didn't, it's on HBO, I think it came out last yeah. year, and I had no particular interest. Like, I think most of my connection to Space Jam is purely nostalgic. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I don't really need to watch the new one, because I don't, like, mm -hmm. know anything about LeBron James or whatever. Yeah. But I looked up the plot of it just out of curiosity, and it's about, like, sentient AI, it's about like what? It's about like that the basketball algorithm has become sentient and that they have to beat this algorithm at basketball to like restore balance. That's way too much. <laughs> That is and way I was too, like, that's what too, that's, the fuck? That's too much for me to even like hear what? right now. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going on? What kind of crack are they smoking in the writer's room that they're like, Don Cheadle Bro, the is going to play a sentient AI embodiment of basketball. And fucking... Dude, the coke got better. <laughs> <laughs> they were on something. Oh my God. Make original movies. Yeah. Like again, like Ugh. this is just another... Just another thing where you don't need to remake it. Nobody asked. Just another occasion. Nobody Please. asked for it. Just leave the first one alone. Or, like, take the, the energy. Take the energy that went into, like, coming up with the batshit crazy idea for the first one. And, like, use that as inspiration to make a new movie about something equally as fucked today. Mm -hmm. Like, be like, um, Kim Kardashian ends up in the Spongebob universe. Yeah, right. And has to, like, I don't know. Like, fucking just do something yeah. else. yeah. Change the mo what is it? The movie algorithm has changed. Yeah. Please. <laughs> the movie algorithm has become sentient. And we're having her on as a guest next week <laughs> to talk about Ex Machina. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god. But I'm like, the fact that this movie has some sort of like weird, like palatable level of corporate self-awareness and that the sequel is about like AI getting out of control is like, it really leaves a bad taste in my I mouth. I feel like this is just like, this movie's like crazy enough and weird enough that I can like kind of still turn my brain off and have a good time. That seems like I have to like, like you're, you're like, you are actually trying to make a statement. You're, I think. You're acting, asking me to put in mental work. To, to watch, watch this movie about Looney Tunes playing basketball. Yeah. <laughs> no, ma'am. Sim- simply, I cannot clock in for that. No, ma'am. I am taking the day off, actually. You will not see me. I also thought it was kind of funny that Bill Murray plays himself in this because that's, like, that happens in Zombieland, too, which I don't know how I feel like often. he's just that guy. Is he, how does he, drop in the comments somewhere if you can think of any other occasions in which Bill Murray has played himself in a piece of media because it doesn't surprise me that it's happened twice and I bet it's happened more mm-hmm. than twice. Yeah. He seems like that guy. He, well, yeah, he's a fucking narcissist and a diva, apparently. Yeah. So it doesn't shock me in the slightest, unfortunately, but... Um, do we want to get into our regularly scheduled programming? Absolutely. So, I feel like if we're going to play with Fuck, Mary Kill... Who are I'm like, going to do it with the Looney Tunes. Oh, okay. I'm going to include them. So, do you want to do, like, Michael Jordan, Bugs, Bugs Bunny, Bunny, Lola Bunny? Is she even on screen enough for it? I mean, I, I guess. I guess for, like, human people, there's, like, Michael Jordan, there's Stan, who's, yeah. like, the assistant guy, and then, I don't know. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Let's just do the whole movie, because I feel like that's not enough to pick. There's no, like, three main yeah. things happen there's too much going on in this yeah. movie for me to dilute it yeah. down to like who has the most screen time because exactly it's like what is happening well like i feel like sometimes we'll be we'll like shy away from being like all where i'm gonna do this for like the looney tunes i'm gonna do this for the looney tunes yeah. i wish we did this for the muppet movie i would tell you what muppet i want to fuck gonzo mm. <laughs> i'll say it yeah <laughs> so you are a part of the lgbtq community <laughs> <laughs> Do I dress like Gonzo? Or you're do I... wearing. You look like you're. You look like you raided your husband Gonzo's out uh, closet today. Honestly, this would be an improvement if instead of the Looney Tunes, it was the Muppets. Yeah, I, I, I think the Muppets are just the better franchise. Can we obviously. replace what sport? Can it be like Tanya Harding teaches the Muppets to ice Shut skate, up. or like like what? What would be a better sport for the Muppets to have to infiltrate? Like, like the Looney Tunes infiltrate basketball. What the Muppets are going to infiltrate? Personally, like- as as a gay person, I want to see the Muppets play soccer with the U.S. Women's National Team. That'd be great. Like Megan Rapino yep. is like beating the shit out of like <laughs> Fozzie Bear. <laughs> yeah. I think I would like to see Sean White be the only Yo. human in like a skiing slash snowboarding movie like a like a winter time <gasps> wait what about tony hawk? Ski. tony hawk he would be a good only human in a yeah. muppet situation as well yeah, yeah i guess those i'm solely basing off of the the human counterpart yeah. but i do think like yeah all the muppets learn how to do bmx yeah that'd be hilarious we're on a muppet tangent for the last week or two i mean every it's just better that's it's just my life you know it's just better um but i guess fuck mary kill I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna kill Lola Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> the, the world is better <laughs> off without Lola Bunny. She has to die. You like... don't think she's a feminist icon? No. <laughs> she's right my nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> she's my sleep paralysis <laughs> demon. <laughs> Lola Bunny. Um, Lola okay. Bunny's the reason I have body image issues. Like, why am I comparing myself to a rabbit right now, dog? My body just work for <laughs> popping off whenever Lola Bunny appears. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill the shit out of Lola Bunny. Um, I'm gonna marry. What's his name? Tweety. Tweety. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna marry Tweety. Um, because I rock with him. He's a sensitive guy. Um, and then I'm gonna fuck... See, I feel like I can't say Michael Jordan as a you human. Can, you can say that. I don't want to say... I don't want to choose the human in this situation. Yeah, okay. So it's what, more fun. What Looney Tune do you want to fuck? Elmer Fudd? No. Wiley Coyote? No. Um, who's the one that does the tornado thing? Tasmanian Devil? Yeah, I want to fuck the Tasmanian Taz? <laughs> That'd be a ride. I get motion sick, though. That's fair. So, maybe not. I'm going to fuck Lola Bunny and then I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm going to... I feel like I don't want to marry Michael Jordan because, like, I know that the gambling addiction is about to flare up. And so I yeah. just... I don't want to be a wife 
for that. Mm-hmm. Um, no offense to anyone with gambling addiction, but I just, I don't know if I can handle being somebody's partner through that. Yeah. I'm not strong. I'm not emotionally I strong also, at all. yeah. Um, so I feel like I'm going to fuck Michael Jordan. Yeah, the ab shot that they very strategically yeah. placed in that movie. Hot. I'm, because I can't say I'm going to fuck one of the monsters because that's. That, you can. Who's stopping you? Me. <laughs> I'm stopping myself. I can't admit to that. You um, don't want to fuck Danny DeVito as an alien? No. No, because he's the he's the entre- entrepreneur of a failing business. So like, yeah, what am I going to get out of that? No. I'm going to kill... So you just have sex for financial gain is what yes, I'm hearing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm marrying... Can I marry Larry Bird? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to marry Larry Bird and I'm going to kill... Bill Murray. So you really went for all the humans. Yeah. If you're asking me which Looney Tune I want to Yeah, fuck, that's way more fun. Who's the big chicken? The big chicken. That I don't know his burn. name, but I know who you're talking about. Maybe the Martian? <gasps> He's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. That could be fun. Or maybe like, maybe one of the monsters. <laughs> if, we're go- if, we're, if we're going. Be, be serious. I like the, say, say it with your chest. I feel like the, the blue one. Mm. No, not the, the blue one's the... The stupid one. Who's yeah. the purple one? No, no, no. The green one with the spikes on his back. Yeah. That's uh-huh. texture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And then I think for food and drink, we kind of knocked it out of the park in real life. Yeah. We watched real. this movie together just right before recording this. And we got five guys, not endorsed, not sponsored, but we did get five guys, burgers mm-hmm. and fries which was super fire, and we drank beers. And that, yeah, like, we had that some sour right. beers. Yeah, that felt that felt yeah. right to me. I can't tell you to do anything else. I Unless my, you want to, like, just rip shots. My only, unless you want to literally smoke crack. Like, go smoke yeah. crack. I'm not Go do anything. as much coke as the writers <laughs> did, and then come back and talk to me. But um, my, my thought to elevate it was, like, you make a fucked up burger. Like, have you ever mm. been to that place that has the 420 burger Mm-mm. that literally has, like, it has mozzarella sticks and onion rings oh. on the burger? That's a good call. It's, like, fucked up. It's, like, overwhelming. Like, you can't even bite into it. Like, you yeah. literally have to, like, it's like fork and knife that scared. shit. kind of scared. Yeah, you're scared of it a little bit. It's, like, the entire frozen food section has been, like, put onto a burger. Like, there's pierogies in there. What? What the yeah. fuck? No, I made that up, but... Like, a definitely, stupid... There's definitely a fried egg. A stupid burger. Like, yeah. something ridiculous. No, that's smart. That's a good one. Or you go and you, you just eat something really branded. So you do, like, um, like the Spongebob mac and cheese. Mm. Or, like, some sort of food you that has, like, a eat? corporate attachment. You know what you should eat is the Cheetos mac and cheese. Oh, yep. yep. That feels like this movie. Have you had it? No. I have. have. It's awful. It's awful. Like, awful awful or good awful? Awful awful. Damn. That's a shame. Well, I'm sure I maybe would have really enjoyed it, like, as a as a child. Kid, yeah. But, but as an adult, I found no joy in the Cheetos mac and cheese. Yeah. Um, and then for the drink, so Michael Jordan does have a tequila brand, but one <laughs> bottle of it is $80, so. Jesus. And I don't really fuck with tequila, and I certainly don't fuck with, like, celebrity-owned alcohol brands that are no. overpriced. Uh, I'm pretty sure Henry and I recently Henry bought a tequila that was like Kid Rock or something. Oh. But it was just like because the packaging was so funny. Oh, I'm sure. And it wasn't, I don't think it was particularly pricey, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Mm -hmm. Um, But my other idea was that, so they mentioned Gatorade in this, and obviously Gatorade was like a big corporate sponsor for Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. And there was this TikTok going around for a while that somebody said that if you (gasps) mix together the cucumber mint flavored um gatorade, gatorade yeah. with mike's hard cranberry yeah and then like a shot of vodka or whatever that it's called like the flavor yeah and everyone's like it's the flavor and they're like i can't describe it but it's like i know it and it's like it's like something is unlocked in my brain when i have this and i've never tried it because honestly it just it doesn't sound super appealing to me but i think you should but i think if you're gonna make a gatorade drink that's the only one i know of that's a good call yeah but i feel like if i was gonna use any flavor of gatorade as a mixer i would choose the the blue one well i feel like the only gatorade drink i ever had was like when you're like sitting there and you don't have a mixer and you're like 16 years old and a chaser it's like warm yeah, it's, like, warm. Like, it's not even a chaser. Like, you mix them together, and then you, like, go to the high school dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you drink it out of the nipple bottle. 
Yeah. Actually, I changed my answer. Drink Gatorade out of the nipple bottle. <laughs> the one that has, like, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's like... You certain, all know what I'm talking about. A certain bottle of Gatorade, like, has this, like, little twist, t- like, top, like a pop top, little sippy cup lid thing. Mm-hmm. And it just is really satisfying to drink yeah. out of. Yeah. For no reason. Uh-huh. No booze necessary. Just give just me the a nipple plastic, of the gator. Yeah. <laughs> the gator nipple. The gator nip. <laughs> yeah. And then what movie would you follow this up with? Um, I have a really good answer. I've got a pretty good one. Um okay, I have two. One of them just like feels right, but one of them is more like on brand mm-hmm. with like the story, I guess. The one that feels right is Osmosis mm-hmm. Jones. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> Based it, on vibes alone, yeah, vibe, absolutely, like, strictly vibes. <laughs> yeah. You follow this up with Osmosis Jones, absolutely. Um, but oh, that's a whack fucking movie. Maybe we should cover that sometime. Honestly, that yeah. movie's insane. Yeah, we probably should. That movie is why I had hypochondria as a kid. <laughs> I like that. It's like one of those things that like I was shown it in like science class. Oh yeah, when like your teacher didn't want to teach, mm-hmm. they're putting on Osmosis Jones. Um, but the one that like plot wise jumps for me is you watch Ratatouille because it's a, another one of where um, someone else's talent is being used. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Also animated. Also just like a really fun Good. and light movie. Yeah. If you could touch an object and gain the talent of any individual, who would you want to take their talent? Hmm. Like if you could like touch Gordon Ramsay's spatula and become like get his knowledge as a chef like what who would you want to steal their powers um kamala harris because i'm <laughs> <laughs> her talent for what being a crackhead exactly. her talent for being so clocked out dude <laughs> the wheels on the bus <laughs> Why does she not know the <laughs> melody to Wheels on the Bus? No, it's because it's because I want to touch whatever pill bottle that she has and just find that balance of inner peace that she has obviously come to. Okay, if you're gonna go for a delusion, if you want, <laughs> if you want a delusion, then I want like RuPaul's. I want just like I just want to laugh like that and just like own the world. How does he laugh? Can you just like. <laughs> <laughs> I like because his face doesn't move. Yeah. He just goes, ah! <laughs> <laughs> so true. Oh, or like Heidi Klum. Like, yeah. out, out, especially after seeing that worm costume. Just Heidi Klum as a worm. <laughs> oh my god. All vibes. But yeah, no, I just want Kamala's like cocktail of like yeah. <laughs> whatever fucking drug she's on. That's, you don't have to use magic to get that. Like you could just get that at the pharmacy. No, but like I want her specific one. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I just love a Venn diagram. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I literally made everyone I know watch that. I, <laughs> so I manually sent that video into several family group chats because I'm like, can we all just like... yeah live in this moment uh-huh. together yeah. of, like, experience. Not that there's any part of me, like, as an individual who likes or empathizes or fucks with, like, Kamala Harris. Yeah. I just think she's so fucking, like, cracked out. Yeah, it's it's funny. <laughs> Some crazy tea is gonna get spilled really soon, I think, about, like, whatever's going on there. I hope so. Um, but my answer for what you follow this up with, mm-hmm. not to, I think it's a little obvious, but I do feel like quite pleased with myself, is you watch another chaotic basketball related movie mm-hmm. where a famous basketball player plays himself as he obtains a somewhat magical opal what the fuck? from Adam Sandler and you watch Uncut Gems. Oh! Uncut Gems? It was, was Josh Sutton's news when he watched Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems. Um, yeah, you watch Uncut Gems because not only is Julia Fox just continue to be an icon and a legend, but it's just so another much. basketball movie that I actually enjoy. So yeah, that's a really that. good one. Word. Uh, and what would you rate this? I'm gonna give it a six. Mm. It's it's like objectively not that good of a movie, and it's really confusing. But I do think for nostalgia and entertainment factor, and just that it was like really doing something like absurd and kind of quirky uh-huh. and just like unapologetically just doing whatever yeah. the fuck was going on there uh-huh. um and it's like i'm getting face fucked by the 90s <laughs> this whole time yeah. which is kind uh-huh. of a nice blast from the past so blast in your mouth from the past yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna give it like a six i'm gonna give it 
as a first time viewer, because I'm a first time viewer, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it a seven. Yeah. Because it was just insane. Yeah. It's it was, wildly entertaining. Yeah. But you're like, also like, like this confused. Is, this is one of those movies that like I was probably like the most fun I've had watching in a while. So I don't know. It was fun to watch you watch it. Yeah. Because your mouth was just open the whole time and I was like, I can't tell if you love it or hate it. Or not oh. like resenting me for making you watch it no. or just like I feel like I I have a better sense of the world. Amazing. Yeah. As you as should. A, yeah, it kind of opened my third eye. Um, so I'm glad that I made you watch this because now you can say that you're just a bit more cultured. Um, because you. I do think that this is a, a really important piece of media literacy that yeah. every I'm going to say, like, American, because this feels kind of aggressively American to uh -huh. me. But just every every human really needs to experience Space Jam to have a better sense of the world. So uh, this is my contribution to you for movies you've never seen as we continue this month's mm -hmm. theme. Um, I don't really know what we're going to do next week, so we'll, yeah. do, we'll do something. Maybe something neither of us have seen. Yeah, we're going to hit you with something um but always as always continue to slide into our dms with suggestions for themes for movies you want us to cover for chocolate or vanilla things for merch you want to see i don't know we i have some free time now that i have a real job <laughs> with regular hours so um maybe i can make more merch but all the links to all that stuff is in the description and, and check it all out mm -hmm. and um we love you all you are all amazing thank you so much for listening and goodbye and good night